Okay, so this is the first session around Alton Park. And for those of you really that have never done a track day before, I, I haven't done many at all, this is giving you an indication of how much faff there is um, getting yourself sorted. So we're getting ready to go out. We've got the ghost camera on the back of the bike, so you can basically just see my great arse for most of the... And then we've got rear-facing camera, top left, and front-facing camera, bottom left. Hopefully I've got them all synced up properly, but you know, I'm not a video editor, and it's, uh, it's a bit of a mission. Now, this is pretty standard. Um, you spend a lot of your time mooching about inside. I'm well, lucky enough to get a garage here, but you could be out in the paddock as well. You got people there on track stands and slick tires, running tire warmers and all that. Each to their own, no problem at all. I like to turn up on the bike, ride around and, and ride home again. It does sort of limit your um, enthusiasm on track a little bit because there is a bit of jeopardy around, you know, I need to be able to get home in one piece. So it keeps a lid on the old, uh, you know, red mist which is quite good. So, if you're looking at the uh, the process, what to expect, expect various amounts of faffery before you actually get going. So we've had the call, we're th sort of third group out, and you've got to sort of mix it up with everybody else that's going to be on track as well. So a bit of chatting, always nice to go with a group of pals if you can, it's always ideal. And the first bit of the track, the one bit of the session, is um, the guys making sure you've had your noise test and all that sort of stuff. So the marshals do a fantastic job of just checking everybody's stickers and they've got everything sorted. You'll probably see a dude there in the orange top. He's just making sure everybody's uh, ready to go and they are who they say they are. And they've got the right coloured wristbands and that sort of thing. You have to show a wristband before you get out on track to make sure you're in the right group. It's dangerous if you're in the wrong group. Um, too fast or too slow, either way. You know, you've got to be in the right group. And you sort yourself out. Uh, you sort of say, well, yeah, I reckon I'm pretty good. I'll go in an intermediate group or I reckon I'm amazing. I'll go in the fast group. Or you say, I reckon I'm so, so brilliant. I'll go in the novice group and prove the fact that I'm so brilliant by overtaking everybody. Uh, it's, it's whatever you want, really. But you might find yourself like this one. This is a this is a lower group. I'm not a track racer. I'm on an inappropriate machine. Um, it's only my fourth, fifth track day, something like that. So, yeah, I still class myself as a novice track rider. But look at all the track bikes you got there. A lot of them sort of running slicks, tire warmers. Not many number plates, you'll see. So a lot of these are dedicated track machines which can be a bit intimidating to start with and the way around that is just to say to yourself just ride your ride a lot of riders will take the mirrors off you know they're not worried about what's going on behind and that's part of it you know ignore what's on behind you but sort of be aware you don't want to be swapping lanes or changing lines coming along you don't want to be confusing people if somebody's going to overtake you they give them the opportunity to but it is their responsibility to do it appropriately and safe and you can only hope that they'll do that sort of thing. If there's somebody being an absolute clown on the track, you go and tell the you go and tell the um, dudes in the orange vests, and let them sort it out. You know, it's not up for us to to smash the people's faces in uh, because they've cut you up inappropriately. You know, there's uh, there's methods in place to sort that out. So don't take it into your own hands. Just go and have a quiet word with somebody. You're not splitting on them. You're keeping it safe for everybody else. So, all of that time there, that was a good good five minutes, you know, getting out onto the actual track itself. And now we're sort of lining up, ready to go, finding our spot, and just getting the nod from the man in front. Now, this is the first session of the day one, you know, first session day one, there's going to be two sighting laps. So use these sighting laps to see things like 
where the flag marshals live. Which way does the track go? That sort of stuff. Okay, so we're off down the old pit lane. There will be a white line that leads out of the track. You shouldn't cross that one. It's like the blend line, so don't cross that one. You always have a bit of a shoulder check. Make sure somebody's not coming around you. There shouldn't be when you get released onto the track. It's not a problem. Looking out for marshal posts and trying to uh, put into practice those lines you've learned from playing the PlayStation onto the track. And it's massively different. You might know which way the track goes, left or right, and you might sort of recognise some corners, but mostly, just treat it like a fresh piece of road you've never seen before. Nice smooth throttle responses. Remember your tyres are just, uh, they're waking up. You know, those guys with the tyre warmers, they've just been sat in pit lane for five minutes. I wouldn't trust them. But it's their own, obviously. Keep a nice distance from the guys away in front of you. We don't know who they are, we don't know what they ride it like, we don't can't trust anybody. Flag marshal up there, look. Waving his greens. Do a fantastic job the marshals. Another marshal post there. And also look out for your runoff areas. In case you do happen to outbreak yourself, you know. Where can I actually go wrong and not cause me an issue? Have a plan B up your sleeve. Take a note of how big the curbs are. Do you really want to be bumping over them or not? Take a note of any slippy bits. Often if there's been cars around the track the day before, they've pulled some mud onto the track, that sort of thing. Somebody may have fallen off and dragged a load of gravel onto the track. It's often cleaned up, but something just to remember. Trying to remind yourself where the track goes. You can see some scars in the grass and that sort of thing where people have been off before, so you think to yourself, right, don't make that mistake. Some marshal posts have these big green LED sort of lights against them, others are on flags. You've got to sort of keep them in your peripheral vision, really, as you go around. Back to the start and finish straight. Keep an eye out where the pits are, because you're going to need to be able to pull into there. And you always raise an arm or stick a leg out if you're pulling into the pits. Let people know what you're doing, even on the last lap. Still on sighting laps, don't forget. So there's no overtaking on sighting laps. And we've got a hand up in the air there. And a red flag, or a yellow flag, or something going on. Somebody might have just gone off. Getting back used to the circuit again, putting a bit more input into the bike, a bit more input onto the brakes. Just getting a feel for things again. Stick your toe down. And round we go. Looking out for the braking markers, the little signs that tell you left or right. Another foot on the deck. sighting laps. You think that's going to cause some issues later, don't you? Got a 180 tyre on the back, which isn't the correct one. It should be a 190. And it's running out of ground clearance quite easy. It's getting the old tip-in points right. Another 
hotel on the deck. Then we can wind it on up over the hill here. Remember that this corner does go on for quite a while before you need to turn off and go back the other way. A double apex this one. So that should be coming up to the end of the second sighting lap. Now, previously we've always come into the pits and then gone out again, but I don't think we are this time. So, let's go. So we should be up to full speed now. The dude who just overtook me certainly is. So, manage the red mist is the order of the day. It's still early, got a long way to go, and a short time to get there. You shouldn't really overtake people as they've committed to the turn. Get them on the straights is perfectly fine. And just remember which way the corners go. And the outside of people is perfectly fine. And on the brakes is perfectly fine as well. When you get a bit of traffic up ahead of you, just be wary. We don't know what any of these riders are like. Just don't go flying into them, guns all guns blazing. You know, watch them for a little bit. We're not racing. We don't have to make that overtake immediately. If you think somebody's going to be slowing you down, then get past them. If you think you're going to slow somebody up, let them go. It's their responsibility to put a nice overtaking on you. You can cuss them out if you want, if you think they're in the wrong group. But then you've got to point that direction at yourself as well sometimes. Well, you think there's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a mix-up, a bit too busy, too much traffic? Just hold back. It's everybody else's day as well. The thought of taking somebody else out, you know, imagine the guilt. You ruin their day. There's no insurance on track either. So if you're on your road bike and you crash it, that's on you. I've heard stories of people throwing them out the back of a van on the way home to claim the insurance, but no, I'm not condoning that. Just stay on the thing. Toe on the deck all the way around this corner. And now we can really let rip, because we know this corner opens up. Aim for the tree on the inside, and then just keep it pinned. For as long as you dare possible. Get a few on the brakes going in. You've got to get your overtaking done nice and early because you don't want to be overtaken when people are tipping in. Because they're going to shut the door on you. They don't know you're there. It's not their fault. It's your own fault if you do that. And if you aren't going to overtake somebody, then get gone. can go either side, but I say don't be erratic on the overtakes. Be nice and obvious as to which side you're going to go. Don't come up behind somebody and somebody swerve out. There might be somebody coming past you. And once you're happy, you can run your own race. Challenge yourself a bit. A bit later on the brakes each time, a bit harder on the brakes each time, a bit more on the throttle each time. If you're there to explore the limits of the bike and yourself. But in a safe environment. Safe-ish. If you don't break yourself, then stay yourself. Build up to it. You know. I'm trying my best to practice leaning off. I'm absolutely terrible at it. 
cannot get the grips on it at all. So if you see any strange contortions on this camera angle, then that's why my good friend Lara Motors give me some top tips and I'm trying my best to heed. But it's just not uh, she's not working for me. Probably because I'm a massive heffalum. And about as flexible as a stick. But we're trying, and we're not getting it right. And that was my mission today, was to just try and get that position right. Maybe I'm on the wrong bike. That's what I'm putting it down to. So tipping in, there are a few bikes ahead of us, and we're just taking our time. Overtaking on the straights under acceleration is the easiest way of doing it, if you've got it. Overtaking on a nice corner around the outside is better, but just be aware that people might drift wide. They might come back inside you again. You get a bit of wheel spin out of those corners sometimes if you hear the bike just sort of slipping on the back tyre. But I haven't changed my tyre pressures for this first section, so they're already warming up. Probably time to let a bit of air out. I run about road pressure to start with just to see how far they'll go for how long. Get that, get that bit of experience in the old noggin. And when they start to slip a bit and slide a bit, that's when you know it's time to let a bit of air out. The problem is they get too hot, or they get hotter than they would on the road, and that increases the pressure in them. See, boils, gas laws. And that gives you less contact patch. So you let a bit of air out, the contact pads gets bigger. Or goes back to normal based on the uh, the pressure in the tyre. Just got to watch yourself on the ride home, that's all. It's only about four or five to the SI you let out. Makes a huge difference. It's like goes a bit light up over the top of that hill. And can slide and run to the edge a little bit. Got a couple of bikes ahead, so just easing off. No need to go barreling into and putting an overtake on here. We've got to see what they're doing, and then pick your moments. Right, where's this guy going to go? Is he going to run wide? Is he going to come out into us? Is the chap in front of him holding him up? Give him plenty of space. You know, you're going to get squeezed at the end, so let him go. No need to be a hero just there. There's always the next time. Okay. We just saw the chequered flag. Now we don't slow down on the chequered flag. Because we've got to get off the track and let the other team back on again. So you carry on at your normal pace. And you might start to see the bike sliding a little bit. Just being a bit more gentle on the throttle and bent over. It's a bit of a squeeze through there, but we committed, so we had to go. And they're quite like this here, and we can break into here, so. You get the back wheel locked up a little bit under the engine braking, but we don't mind that. We got the chicane just to practice a quick left right flick. Nothing really happens very quick on this bike. Toe goes on the deck. You see it rolling off very very early for these corners. It's like, well, it's a big old bus, it takes a bit of slowing down. And so does the bike. Starting to get a bit tired now though because we're massively unfit as well. So we just take it in stints of a mad sprint. And then roll off, coached a bit. It's not balls out all the way around, just try a few corners, test the ground out. So there you go. Remember we're on the last lap start and finish straight is. 
we can start rolling off. Stick a hand out, stick a leg out, let people know. And pull it off the track. And then back into the pits. Nice and steady into the pits. There is a uh, there is a speed limit. I think it's about 60k, which is pretty fast. Uh, there's people milling around all over the place. So, steady away. We're lucky enough to get a garage. So just keep it nice and steady. Expect people to want to come out of the garage ready for their session. So, pick your garage. Find out where you're going to go. And just ease yourself back into your spot. There's still plenty of time to get yourself sorted. It's 40 minutes between sessions. So it's 20 minutes a session. And there we go. Chats and banter with everybody else now for the next 40 minutes.